In this video, I'm gonna walk through my complete local SEO report. This is the exact report template that I use for my clients, which are primarily self-storage facilities, uh, where we typically do a combination of local SEO and Google Ads. So this report will pull in data from all the different data sources that'll be valuable for you when you're building out reports for clients. Uh, we're gonna pull in data from Google Analytics, Google Search Console, Google Business Profile, and Google Ads to make this report. So with that, we'll jump right into kind of what the report is, like the sections that I like to include, and then we'll get into some of the specifics on some of the data I'm actually pulling in. So right off the bat, what I like to do with these local SEO reports is the first slide, one to two slides, are gonna be the data the client cares about the most. For self storage facilities, that's move-ins. So they're gonna to wanna to know how many move-ins are they getting per month through their website. Those are people renting a unit either online or calling. So I wanna pull in that data and show that right away. Um, so whatever type of local SEO industry you're in, I always wanna lead with the most important business metrics and the client you're working with or the founder of that company or the CEO of that company can look at this data and they don't necessarily need to go through the rest of the report. So in this case, we can see this is one where move-ins have been trending up since November. I think we started working with this one the very last week of October. And since then, we've had four months in a row uh, with some of our best numbers. We're also pulling in net move-ins, which factor in people moving out as well. So February was our, our best month so far. I like to break it down quarterly as well. Sometimes when you look month to month, um, there's not as much changes, but when you zoom out and look quarterly, you could really start to see some of the long-term growth. So this is one where prior to working with us, they were only getting nine to 10 move-ins per quarter. The very first quarter we worked with them and we only had two months, we already had 18. Uh, so we already almost doubled their move-ins. And then by the third quarter here of working with us, and again, we still have all of March. So this 24 is going to be much higher. It's going to be in 30 plus. We've essentially doubled the move-ins again, two, two quarters in a row. So this data is really critical to have up front. After this, I like to pull in a slide that just pulls in the top channels. So here we have the channels driving the most traffic and the ones that have the best conversion rates. So we could see search by far, paid search and organic search, both have an 11 plus percent conversion rate. Um, and we could start to see that's really their main source of leads outside of direct. But this is where you can break down uh, traffic versus conversions. The key things I like to look for here are, is there a high traffic channel that's not converting well. In this case, organic search is converting well, but let's say the organic conversion rate was only 2%. That's a good sign we need to do some conversion rate optimization work because we're getting so much traffic, but it's just not converting. And vice versa, is there a channel that has a really high conversion rate that's getting low traffic? In this case, paid search might be worth investing more into because of how strong the conversion rate is. So that's how you can use this data. And I like to put a table with the full amount of data here as well. Uh, one note that served me well for reporting is getting rid of a lot of the noise on the charts, things like grid lines. You want to have more white space here so you can really hone in on what you're trying to showcase. Um, it's easy to fall into the trap of just jamming in so much data and so much charts on one page. I really like to try to keep these as clean as possible and have minimal data on each slide. Now, I also include a spot to write insights on the report because usually if I'm going to send this off to my client, I want to kind of write in some analysis on what's important and what I'm noticing from the data. Um, after we get to the website channels, I like to have um, specific reports for the services we're providing. In this case, we're doing Google Ads and we're doing SEO. So each of those get their own section in the report. Um, I have some other tutorials on Looker Studio here. Um, those will be good if you wanna learn the basics of like how to actually set these up, how to use this editor to actually build charts and adjust them. Uh, we're not gonna cover that in this video today, but what I do want to leave you with is a framework that if you understand this reporting framework, you could even make your own reports. You don't necessarily need my template. Um, you could take some of these principles and build out your own report with that. Um, so after we get to overall website metrics, I like to put Google ads first, but you could put either SEO or Google ads here. So for Google ads, again, the first slide is always going to be conversion based. How many conversions are we getting and what the, what is the cost per conversion? In this case, we've made some really big traction to start the year where prior to that, when we launched the campaigns, we really weren't getting a, a bunch enough activity. Um, and then in January, we started to see improvement. The cost per conversion dropped a lot. And then in February, uh, we've had our best month. Now, part of that is, there's a couple of things we did there. One was a little bit of conversion rate optimization work. Their conversion form had over 40 fields. Uh, we started reducing those in November, 
but we really in December started reducing them even more drastically. I think we're down to about four or five fields on the form. So it's much less friction to get people to fill out that form. And we've also made some other uh, keyword changes inside of Google ads, but this will ultimately showcase to the client how the campaigns are doing. Then if they want more detail, I like to pull in click the rate, cost per click, um, and overall ad spend. So we've actually reduced ad spend and we're getting more conversions, which is another big part of the story. Um, cost per click, I don't personally care too much about this, uh, but again, it's a indicator. If your cost per conversion changes, I like to see, did my cost per click change? Um, ultimately, I'm willing to spend more per click if the cost per conversion is lower. So again, I like to have it on here, but it's not always the most meaningful metric. Uh, click the rate, I do like to look at for ad copy. So I like to have it on here. If this number starts declining, it's a good sign we might need to refresh our ads. So that's why I like to have the trends here. In January, we did a whole ad copy refresh and you can see a massive increase um, in click the rate because of that. I also like to pull in uh, campaigns. In this case, we're just running one campaign. We're running one search campaign. Um, sometimes I'll change this to ad group if there's only one campaign. Um, and then we have a keyword breakdown as well, where which keywords are converting. So right now our near me keywords are converting the best and our city-based keywords for two of the cities that we're targeting. If we look at cost per conversion, um, right now we can see near me is just insanely low. Um, some of these conversions are calls. So this is one where we do need to dig into those phone calls. When I see a cost per conversion that low, to me it means there might be a little bit of spam in there. Um, these numbers look more realistic for these other keywords, but this is where you can start to see which keywords are performing the best. Now, one thing I don't have in here, but sometimes I'll add is impression share. Cause one of the things you can do is look for keywords that have high conversions, but low impression share. So if we look at this keyword here, this college station one, storage college station, we have four conversions and a very good cost per conversion. If you add in impression share as a metric, I think it's this one. This will start to show you, okay, we're only showing up 55% of the time that keyword search. This might be one we want to ramp up. There's a lot of room to show up more often. And if it converts this well, this is like a really good way you can make some optimization recommendations. Are there any high converting, low impression share keywords? So that's why I like this report. Um, after this, we'll switch gears into SEO. So for SEO, what I like to trend out, um, actually this, this slide we're actually combining because they really only have one conversion metric. So I combined it. So this is where you can customize. Sometimes I'll have a separate conversion slide if there's three conversions. In this case, really it's just online rentals is the main thing we're tracking. And we just reconfigured how we're tracking that through the website. So that's starting to track since February, how many people are purchasing a storage unit online. Uh, then we're tra tracking organic traffic and then impressions as well. So impressions are a good indicator from Search Console of the growth. And then those impressions ideally get to the first page and then it starts to lead to traffic. So both of these metrics are trending kind of in the way we wanna see them. So this is a good high level view of how organic is doing. I like to put in a keyword report. This one's pretty cool. You can click on an individual keyword. So if we click on boat storage, college station, it'll filter these charts. And then we can now see how that one keyword is doing. So in this, in this case, we launched a, a new uh, page on the website in November and we immediately got to the bottom of the first page. Since then we've sort of been fluctuating. So this is probably one I wanna look at and maybe optimize. If I can move this up a few spots, that could be a lot of clicks that are highly relevant and ultimately getting people to convert uh, through the website. So that's what this is. Um, I use a third party tool to get these local map grid scans of like our core keyword. So I'll typically use local Falcon and run a report here and then just download the image and input the image here. I don't have a great automated way to do the map tracking yet. Uh, I know there are some solutions out there, but right now we're just taking a screenshot of this. It's a nice visual. And sometimes I'll take two screenshots side by side and show the month over month change. Um, this is a powerful report to show clients on how we're doing in the local maps. So I always want to integrate that into my reporting. Uh, inside a local Falcon, you can also see the top search results is for a different facility. I just wanted to show the slideshow, which is kind of nice if you're going to do a before and after. So here's the after, and then here's the before. So you can take different screenshots and download both those images right out of the, of the platform here. So I like to have this in here as well. Um, what's really cool about this report is you can pull in Google business profile data. So what I like to pull in are total actions, which are like valuable actions people are taking, which that consists of phone calls, direction requests, and I think website clicks. 
maybe the share button, but we could track phone calls from Google business, how many direction requests are happening and just total actions. So right away I could see year over year, we had 52 actions last year and now we're up to 88. So we're seeing some long-term growth. Um, calls have sort of been up and down. Um, direction requests are down a little bit, so that might be worth looking into. Now we can also pull in views. So how often we're showing up on search results and maps. So we can see our views on the maps and views on search. This is one where if we look year over year, we went from 29 to 110 and then 23 to 88. So you could see some nice steady growth here. Um, I really like visualizing the Google business data in this manner. Cause if you go to your actual Google business profile and you go to your performance, uh, one is like, you have this chart here that you take screenshots of and you can get a lot of the data we just looked at in this platform, but you only um, get six months of data here. I'm not sure if there's another way to dig in and get more, but when you pull it through the API, you can see I have 13 months of data. I have year over year data here and I could show the trends in an, a nice way. I use uh, two minute reports to pull in uh, this data. So this tool, um, allows you to connect to a bunch of different platforms. Google business is one of them. There's others out there too, super metrics. There's tons of companies that do this now, but essentially you, you do need a, a tool to pull in some of the Google business data. And you know, it might be still be called Google, my business in here. Um, yeah. So this is the connector I typically use, but again, you could use any tool Just search Google business profile. Let's say looker connector, and you're going to find a bunch of, a bunch of options that show up. If we look through this, so looks like there's a company Windsor, Supermetrics. Another way to do it, if you want, if you go to resource and manage added data source and then click add right here, if you type in like, let's do the word business, I'll say Google, see with Google business, you're going to have a lot of them that say Google, my business. But if you type in Google business profile, um, you'll see a bunch of options that you could look into. Uh, looks like local Falcon has a connector. I'm going to need to look into that because I haven't actually used that yet. Uh, if you do Google My Business, I know you're going to get some other ones that haven't updated the name. So again, you can get Supermetrics, Two Minute Reports, Power My Analytics. There's tons of them. Uh, whichever one you use should allow you to do something similar here, which is just a nice way to show um, traditional organic performance and then actually Google Business Profile performance. Then I have an appendix at the end where I just kind of put random things in that I kind of like to look at. Normally what I'll do with these is hide a lot of these slides. What's really nice about Looker Studio, and I cover this in my Looker Studio training, is you could hide slides. So if I hide this view slide and go to view mode, that's no longer there and the client doesn't have the option to see it. So sometimes that's a nice way to do it where you can sort of have extra data that you want to see as the service provider or agency, but then not have everything in here that the client doesn't need to see. Sometimes it could be it's too overwhelming. Like if you have too many slides, like this, this report has way too many slides in the appendix. Um, this one's just a little bit of a different scenario, but normally I would hide all of these and I would limit the number of slides the client has. And then I would sort of unhide them when the situation warranted it. So there's a lot of customization you could do here. You don't want to overwhelm clients with too much data. You want this to be actionable, which is the main reason why I always lead with their main, whatever their main goal is. We want to show that right away and then we can kind of dig in further as needed. So, so that's really it. This is my report process that I like to use for local SEO. Again, this structure I like of kind of a, a, the flow of starting with the most important conversion metrics, then getting into overall website metrics and comparing channels. So one screen with a channel comparison. Uh, if you're doing multiple services, you'll have all those broken down here and then going like sort of channel by channel. So whatever ad platforms you're running, uh, if you're doing SEO, Google business, and then closing out the report with that extra detail. So I also really think there's value in writing insights and in reports. I know it's tedious, um, but you're adding a lot of value to the report with not just sending the data, but actually giving the analysis piece. So we typically will go into each slide or if we don't want to do it on each slide, sometimes I'll create a summary slide where I'll write in insights on the first slide of the report. So the client kind of has a summary that they could read through. Um, that's another way of doing it. But the nice thing about Looker Studio, it's very flexible and you could really build out any kind of custom report. But these are the data sources I like. Um, I'll pull in data from a few of these different platforms and then um, use that to build out the report. So um, I do have a newsletter where I give away a lot of Looker Studio templates. Right now we do have one on there. Um, it's not this exact one, but it's fairly similar. Uh, if there's enough people interested in this local SEO one, I'll 
drop a link to it in the newsletter, but make sure you sign up for that so you can get access to a lot of these templates and tools that I'll be releasing uh, a lot more of this year.